going on an adventure. Adventure for the Atari 2600. Adventure! Yeah! It's the late 70s. Atari released their video computer system on September 11th, 1977. It didn't fare well as the company thought, selling roughly 800,000 units by 1978. Not to say the 2600 didn't have anything to show for as it had a decent library of games like Combat, Air Sea Battle, and Indy 500 just to name a few. But 1979 became a turning point for the system and sales as programmer Warren Robinette's new game opened the door for different possibilities of playing video games. And the name of that game was Adventure. This game was released in 1979 and was received mostly positively then, and it still is now, believe it or not. Of course, it's nothing extraordinary by today's standards, especially compared to something like Breath of the Wild, but this game is like a forefather to the Legend of Zelda games and other adventure games. So now you know which game to thank. Plus, there's something more to this game that meets the casual player's eye, and we'll get to that later. As for now, we're going on a classic adventure, so let's take a better look at adventure. I wonder how long it's going to take for that word to get really repetitive. There's a certain charm when it comes to Atari games, especially when you see that this is what you have to go by. Sometimes you'll have to imagine what is happening on screen. That's one of the reasons that make Atari great. You control a square pixel person and you'll have to recover the stolen enchanted chalice and return it to the golden castle. Sounds pretty simple, but it isn't, for the chalice has been hidden somewhere in the kingdom by an evil magician, and along the way you'll find foes and the three dragons or ducks if you look at it that way, Rindle, Grundle, and Yorgle. They'll be around certain parts of the kingdom and won't hesitate to eat you, and if they do gobble you up, it's game over, but you can pick up right where you left off, and you can find items to scare them off like the sword and even a key. Your goal is scared of the gold key. Wow. Speaking of items, there are plenty scattered around, and they'll all help you along your quest, from the keys to open the same colored castles, a magnet to grab hard to reach items, and a bridge to get across barriers. Your character is so goddamn strong he can lift an entire bridge. But getting to those items is a whole different adventure. Did you see what I did there? The dragons could be guarding certain items, and in higher difficulty levels, a bat will come about and steal your items, and drop them in other random places. This will indeed hinder your progress, and another thing that could hinder your adventure is the open playfield. It's big for sure, perhaps a little too big for my generation. You may get lost in your first outing, and may have to backtrack a lot, which is why you'll have to be patient with a game like this. In order to give a game from a bygone era a chance, you'll have to give it time. And in time, you'll be able to find the golden chalice which you'll take back to the golden castle that makes you win the game. And that's how you play. Moving on. Doesn't have any. Next. You would think this game doesn't have anything more to show because of the small cartridge space and limitations of the time. Well, you'd be surprised at what was sneaked in. Of course, there are different difficulty settings and skill levels which you can toggle with on the console, but the developer Warren Robinette left something well hidden in the game, which would coin a familiar term that we all know as the Easter Egg. So to find this, you'll have to be on level 2 or 3, and when you get to this chamber, there will be a gray dot on the floor, which is the same color as the ground, making it virtually invisible. You must then take this dot to the east corridor below the yellow castle, leave it there and bring two other objects to the same screen. This will make the wall flash, and by this time you shall be able to go through the barrier to find the message, 
created by Warren Robinette. I bowed down to the person who first discovered this. So good job, Adam Clayton. Moving on. This game did fairly well for its time, selling over one million copies. Along the way, it did a lot of firsts, as it is widely recognized as the first action-adventure game, the first console fantasy game, the first graphical adventure game on the system, and the first to have a widely known Easter egg, of course. It's also received a homebrewed sequel from Atari Age, created spiritual successors in Rocky's Boots and the Sword Quest series, and has been ported in many Atari collections and Atari flashback systems. So, what is my rate to play? This is a gotta play. It's the game that started a genre and went on to create the greats like The Legend of Zelda, Castle Wolfenstein, Castlevania, Metroid, Metal Gear, the list goes on and on. It's one of the most important video games to come out ever, and it's definitely worth a try, even if you just want to find the easter egg for yourself, because it'll still be one great adventure. But that's only my opinion. If you have your own thoughts, leave a comment. If you like what you see, leave a like. If you think others would enjoy this, share it around the web. And if you want to see more, subscribe! Anyway, this has been Brian the Blue Game Reviews Adventure for the Atari 2600. So I counted how many times I said adventure throughout this video. Adventure. 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 And I got to 13. But now it's this.